Are you applying to college and totally confused by whether you should submit your SAT or ACT scores to particular colleges? Or maybe you've got great test scores and you wanna know where do those matter and where can I leverage those? In this video, we're gonna look at the data from say the top 80 or so schools with a few liberal arts schools sprinkled in. I'm also going to give you some ballpark advice on whether to submit or not submit based on each of these categories. I've been doing this for almost 20 years, coaching students through the college admissions process, giving them advice, looking at the data. I coach students through the essay process. That's one of the things I do best. I'm a trained storyteller. I went to film school. I used to produce video content on television and other mediums. I still do. I'm producing this. You can find awesome resources at supertutortv.com to prepare for all of it. We have books for the ACT. We have online video-based prep courses for the SAT and the ACT. Our digital SAT prep course is dropping soon. If you want to be a beta tester and get access to some of the materials for free in advance in exchange for telling us how they were and reporting bugs, uh, feel free to hit us up supertutortv.com slash beta and subscribe to our newsletter to find out when that course drops. supertutortv.com slash subscribe. Cool. According to the common application in the last admission cycle, approximately 48% percent of students sent their SAT or ACT scores to colleges. So if at any given university, fewer than 48 percent of those students submitted scores that are enrolled, that means that test optional probably is totally feasible at that school. The lower that number, the less they care about test scores. And if that number is above 48 percent, then we're looking at the potential that test scores matter. Now, this is enrolled students, not admitted students. So even at schools where the number is below 48%, you still might have an advantage by submitting a test score, especially if it's strong and high. So this doesn't mean don't submit test scores, you know, if it's on my best bets for test optional. It just means that if your test score is out of range, you probably should leave it out. And I'll get into the details as we go through this. Okay, best bets for test optional. If you don't want to submit your test score, if your test scores are horrible and craptastic, these are great colleges for you. University of Oregon, University of Washington, which by the way is partially test blind, so they won't even look at your test score if it's not at the 50th percentile or above. Old Dominion, Pepperdine, University of Massachusetts, Boston, Temple, Boston University, Northern Arizona, NYU, New York University, one of the highest ranked schools here, SMU, Southern Methodist, University of Rochester, University of Arizona, University of New Hampshire, Villanova, Northeastern Penn State, University of Colorado Boulder, and Claremont McKenna, also a pretty well-ranked college. It's a liberal arts college. Oh, and I almost forgot Marquette. At all of these schools, having a test score isn't giving you an advantage because the correlation is lower than the average number in terms of who is submitting scores. So there is no damage in not submitting a score here. If you're not sure, don't do it. If you're at that 50th percentile or above, it could help you, right? It could be a contributing factor to say, oh, their grades were kind of crappy, but look, they have a pretty good test score. Okay, that's not bad. So if you're at that 50th percentile above, yeah, submit it. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're below that 50th percentile, I really wouldn't. And if you have any scores, like even subsection scores, like the math score or the reading score that's below that 50th percent, I would be wary about sending it if you're maybe 10 points below on one and you've got like a perfect on the other, sure, maybe send that. And if you guys aren't sure what I mean when I say the 50th percentile, every year the majority of schools in the United States fill out something called the common data set. And there's a bunch of data in that. In particular, one thing that you might be interested in is the 25th to 75th percentile ranges of SAT and ACT scores that have been admitted to the college. Okay, good bets. So generally here, I would submit your scores if you're at that 50th percentile or above again. But with this range of schools, I'm gonna also open up that range a little bit more for students in a particular category, which is students who may have a little bit of academic ability to prove. Who's in that category? Students from underrepresented backgrounds that may have gone to high schools that don't typically crank out high achieving students. You know, if you go to a school that's ranked one on great schools or like last place on U.S. News and World Report best high schools and you get in the 25th percentile of this school's SAT range, which is really amazing for your high school, you've accomplished something. And that probably counts more than some kid at, you know, one of the best prep schools in the country, you know, some posh private school in New York City. The other categories that I still recommend submit, anybody who's homeschooled because we just don't have a gauge, mom was grading your papers. Also, anybody who is an international student and not from a school in Asia. Asia tends to have very strong test scores like stronger than US students. Because you're an international student, there is some scratching of the head whether what you did in your country is going to hold up at this college or university. Drexel, Middlebury, Boston, Lehigh, Tulane, University of Denver, University of South Carolina, University of Connecticut, Indiana State, Pomona, Washington and Lee, Wake Forest, Tufts, and University of Wisconsin-Madison. The percentiles here, the sum of the SAT and ACT scores are from 48% to 56%. And what that tells me is that these schools tests are really optional 
it doesn't seem to weigh toward the positive very much, nor does it seem to weigh toward the negative very much. It's kind of a neutral point. Students get in without it, students get in with it. So you can kind of feel free to make a decision in either direction a little bit, but you do want to be careful not to submit definitely under the 25th percentile. And for most students, you want to be right around that 50th percentile or above. And if you're 10 points below, maybe send it and just be a little bit careful here. My next group of schools is schools where there is potentially a marked disadvantage to not submitting. At this point, we are starting to get into a statistically significant range where submitting a test score may correlate with higher admissions. And we know that because our sum of SAT and ACT is at about 57% all the way up to 64%. So it's starting to matter, but it doesn't matter a ton. You still have a shot here if you're test optional, but if you have a good test score and it's in range, and I would say even if you're in the 25th percentile, above that 25th percentile, it could still speak to your favor and I probably would still submit it. I'm not gonna submit borderline scores here and I'm not gonna submit necessarily anything where the subscores are below the 25th percentile still. Central Michigan University, Texas State University, University of Miami, Indiana University, Cornell, Harvey Mudd, Rocky Mountain, Wash U St. Louis, Swarthmore, Vanderbilt, Wellesley, Williams Amherst, Carleton, Emory, University of Illinois, University of Toledo. Next list, poor bets for test optional. At these schools, stores, scores start to matter. And if you don't have a test score to send, it will hurt you in the admissions process. It doesn't mean you have zero chance, you have some chance, but your chances are reduced. And so if you don't have the score, I encourage you to get that score up. We'd love to help. Or look to apply to other schools where you are in range. University of North Dakota, Michigan State, University of Notre Dame, Case Western College of William and Mary, North Carolina State, Carnegie Mellon, Penn, University of Virginia, Stanford, USC, University of North Carolina, Rice, UNLV, Northwestern, University of Michigan, Kent State, Brown University, University of Texas at Austin, Harvard University, Wichita State, University of Iowa. And at these schools, what's my rule of thumb? If you're at that 25th percentile or above, I submit. If you're borderline and you're in one of those contexts, you're an international student, you're homeschooled, or you're from an underprivileged background or a craptastic high school where your score actually is really amazing given that you did it, I'm still gonna submit at these schools too. If you're not one of those special cases, I'm gonna cut it off at the 25th percentile and above and I expect you to send it then. I'm gonna move on to my worst bets list. So if you don't have a test score, these are your worst bets. Some of the schools at the end of this trail are test required. So you're gonna see at the tail end of this list, a few schools where over 100% is the sum of the SAT and ACT scores. Some students submit both and that's how we get above the 100%. Sam Houston, Georgetown, MIT, Georgia Tech, University of Georgia, University of Florida, University of West Florida. As these are over 100%, you can see on average, we're looking at you know 6% at Sam Houston to about 116% at University of Georgia. Florida, Everybody's submitting both, I guess. We have 122% and 123% at University of Florida and University of West Florida. That means kids in Florida are taking the ACT and the SAT. But in Florida, there's also this Bright Future Scholarship where you have to get a qualifying score on the SAT or ACT in a certain way. So this could also be because students are gunning for scholarships. They take both. They both might be kind of in the same range. They figure, hey, why don't I submit both? Can't hurt. There is the list. If you wanna know the SAT to ACT ranges so that you can help yourself make these decisions, we have a magical chart on the blog that goes with this video and you can find the link in the description and you can get all the data you need to answer should I submit or not submit for every single school on your list and use that to kind of weigh out this decision and make an educated guess. Like I said, there's some unknown factors. When we add the ACT and the SAT percentiles, we don't know what percent overlap, right? If that percent of overlap is 20%, maybe these schools aren't as test optional as I think they are, but at least it's a ballpark measurement we can use to make decisions to the best of our ability and figure out where do I need that test score to help give me a bump and where is it not gonna matter. I hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Find us on TikTok. Subscribe to our newsletter, supertutortv.com slash subscribe and watch more videos right here, right now. Why not? We have lots of tips on this whole process and you can find more of us tutoring all the things you want at supertutortv.com. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care and go crush your applications.